Good morning. Greetings, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Ignite Institute of Prophetic Leadership. My name's Jeff Oslin. I'm your host this morning, and we're up to uh, session seven, uh, 12. Here I did. Session 12 of uh, gifts, uh, the Holy Spirit and His gifts. Uh, it's going to be exciting. I pray inspiring you and encouraging you to uh, to step out in the gifts of the Spirit. Um, you know, the, the Holy Spirit wants to give us the, the gifts. It's not as we will, but as he, as he will. And He wants to build all of us up, build all up the body of Christ until we all come to the unity of the faith. He doesn't want anybody left behind. And, and He wants to build everybody up. And, uh, and God, you never know, God might be using you. The Holy Spirit might want to use you to minister to people's lives and to build them up, to strengthen them, to just bring the, some fresh revelation through you uh, as the Holy Ghost moves through you and, and touches people's lives. It's amazing, you know, that the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit can have an impact in people's lives and that could uh, uh, have an impact in their coming into the into the kingdom. Uh, and God wants to see his kingdom being filled, his kingdom come and uh, his will to be done here on earth as it is in heaven. And, and that is filling his king, filling up his kingdom, taking people out of the kingdom of darkness. And God wants to bring them out of the kingdom of darkness uh, into his kingdom. And, and God wants to use you. And we, we all need to be available for that and, and reaching out and believing that. Uh, and, and believing, having increasing our faith to believe for the, the release of those gifts to be used uh, through you. And uh, it's exciting when, uh, when God starts using you. It's starting to use me in some areas in, in that way. And, um, and it's exciting. And, and I believe that there's some uh, other people that want to be, uh, that, that God wants to use. And uh, I just want to inspire you and encourage you to reach out and believe. Reach out and believe. You know, the reason why we don't enter into the promised land sometimes. It's not because uh, the giants are, t uh, are too big or the walls are, t are too high. It's because we don't believe, you know, and we need to strengthen that. We need to believe that, trust in God, trust the anointing, trust Him, trust the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost wants to give you something, give you a word, uh, give you a release, a, a release, a gift, uh, then you step out in faith. He wants to speak to you and he does more than what we can ever ask or think or imagine um like just this morning i got up i god seemed to wake me up a little bit early and i'd um i'd planned to make a send an email off uh, today and uh you know i touched the uh, the laptop and he said and just as clear as anything he said send it now send it now and i was that's probably the reason why he woke me up early to send it off straight away um, so God wants to use all of it, but we need to be available and just uh, having our, our spirit realm uh, tuned to his spirit. Uh, and we need to have, uh, have our spirit uh, tuned up and, and full, full, full of the Holy Ghost so that we can be used on him so he can, we can release him through us, through our spirit, through our soul and out through our bodies. And, um, you know, it's exciting when those things begin to happen. So let's have a look at the, um, we just go through the 12 gifts again. They're divided up into uh, three different groups. Uh, there's the revelation gifts, uh, the gifts that reveal something. And we've started uh, that last week. We started talking about uh, the Word of Knowledge, Part 1. We're going to do uh, Session 12 is um, uh, uh, the, the Gift of the Word of Knowledge, uh, Part 2. And then you've got the uh, Word of Wisdom and Discerning of Spirits. Then you've got the, the Power Gifts, the Power Gifts that do something. And they are the Gift of Faith, Gift of Healings, and the Working of Miracles. And then the third group is the Vocal Gifts that say something. And uh, th those gifts are prophecy, uh, different kinds of tongues and interpretation of tongues that want to speak into people's lives to, uh, to edify them and to build them up and, uh, and strengthen them. So that's, that's exciting. So I like, um, just want to read the, you know, the gifts that are, are listed in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Uh, but I just want to read the, the, the verse before those gifts and, and the one after it because I just think they're so important. But the manifestations of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For the profit of all. That's the main thing I wanted to point out. It's not for you, not for your profit, not to build you up or to strengthen you up, but to build the uh, people, to build up the body of Christ and to exalt the name of Jesus. If the gifts of the Spirit are there exalting you and, and promoting you, then they are not the gifts of the Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit exalt 
uh, Jesus Christ and to build up the body of Christ and, and to uh, release love and grace and mercy uh, through uh, the, through people uh, into people's lives. And uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 11, the scripture after that, but one and the same spirit work, works all these things, distributing each one individually as he wills, as he wills. And that's the most important thing I wanted to point out. It's as he wills and uh, not as we will. And, um, you know, sometimes we get, we get, uh, God will begin to use us in the gifts of the spirit. And, uh, you know, we're just waiting on God and we may be in a, a prayer situation where we're ministering to people on a, a prayer line or individually in a prayer session and we're just waiting on God and God will just uh, release, just drop a, a word uh, a gift uh, into your into your mind, and uh, you just and you just got to release your faith to to release that. Um, just give it out and just step out in faith. Um, but sometimes when we when when those things happen um, and God starts using that, you, we know we think we can use it all the time. We think we have act. You know, I'm we can do this all the time, and and we rush into it. We rush into it, and. Uh, but, you know, I just believe that we just need to wait on God, just wait on him uh, in, in those situations and, uh, and just see what God has to say. Sometimes we're rushing, you know, you know, and, and things and, and it's not the, it's not uh, the gift of the spirit. It's uh, something that we just dreamed up ourselves. Uh, but we just got to be aware of that, you know, and to just wait on God always um, and, and uh, just quieten yourself down. Uh, we're living a hectic lifestyle and uh, we just got to quiet ourselves down and let God speak to us. Let God speak to us. I, uh, I just, re just, gave a, uh, just got a revelation there on the weekend. Um, you know, when that, that scripture in uh, Genesis chapter 1 where, where God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Ghost said to one another, let us make man in our, in our image. Now, I've always uh, sh shared that uh, if God is the spirit, then we are a spirit. You know, he's created us the same as him as the spirit. But I, I just uh, felt that I just written knew a revelation that God, the, uh, the Holy Ghost gave me was that that He's we're made in his image. Therefore, we are supernatural. Uh, that may not be a big revelation to you, but it was just amazing. God just spoke to me, uh, you know, I'm supernatural, then you're supernatural. I live eternally, then you live eternally. Uh, he's, we are made in the same image of him. We have a spirit, but we are supernatural and uh, uh, spirit beings. And also we live eternally uh, and, and we have an opportunity. God's given us a free choice to decide in this life where we spend eternity beyond the grave. Uh, and we need to be aware of that and, and to reach out and to believe for God and that God wants to use you. Uh, and, and it's easy for us to hear the voice of God. It's easy for us to hear but so we know we just need to wait on him. Uh, we don't do it in us. We cannot do anything. God has given, uh, has released a destiny over your life that it's impossible for you to do in your own strength. So we need him. We need him to, to empower us. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I can do my destiny that he's called me to do only through him, not through our own strength, not through my giftings or cleverness. Uh, or marketing or uh, impressiveness it's always through him and uh, we you know we just need to wait on God and allow God to speak into us and we can hear him we can hear his voice and just release your faith and step out and, and uh, to believe God so in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 another one I like reading is verse 31 but earnestly desire the best gifts earnestly desire the best best gifts you know, um, uh, Paul is speaking to the Corinthians, but he's speaking to us. He's speaking to believers uh, uh, today, you know, th that to earnestly desire, to covet the gifts, reach out and believe God. Make, make yourself available for God to use you and open yourself up and allow God to speak into your life. Does that mean that all believers will operate in the gifts of the Spirit? Probably not. Probably not because some believers are just not interested and not not willing to reach out and to believe God. But, you know, I believe as, we, as we're growing in God and, uh, you know, we, we're taking steps to increase our communion with God, our, our fellowship, our relationship with God, uh, you know, because he, 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 he wants to do all that, all those things with you. He wants to uh, come alongside you and have fellowship and relationship and, and uh, talk to you. 
And uh, we need to make ourselves available for that and, and to increase in that, see that increasing around our lives. And as we do that, the Holy Ghost will begin to use you. And, and so we, we make ourselves, we position ourselves for God to use us. Uh, if we're all running around here and there doing lots of little things, we too, your focus is all over the place, uh, too busy, we've got too many distractions. You know, it's difficult for God, difficult for the Holy Ghost to speak to you when you've got doing so many things, you clutter your life up so many, with so much stuff that it's difficult for the Holy Ghost to speak to you. We need to just quieten our lives down, set some time aside to, to just uh, go into our quiet room, go into our secret place and, and, and make that a, a way of life. Make that a, a lifestyle uh, that in, 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 your, in your busyness, make it a lifestyle to just to quieten yourself down. It's great to be busy, uh, but we need to quieten ourselves down. And I don't know what you, whether you understand what I mean, but even we can be busy, but we can be quiet as well. And we need to be listening, tuning ourselves to listening to the voice of the Holy Ghost because he wants to use us in the situation where you are right now. And that may not be in a church service. That might be out there in the streets or in the work or in the family, uh, wherever it is. That may not be where God wants to use you in church. It might be out there in the workplace, in the families and friends and wherever you are, uh, family gatherings. You know, it's a, a word that God wants to give you to release uh, to people's lives, to touch people's lives, to, to uh, ins inspire them, to motivate them, to reach out and believe God and to come into the kingdom uh, and to realize they have a need for God and all of that. And it's exciting when God starts using us. So the gifts of the Holy Spirit will operate through people as the Holy Spirit wills, not as we will, as the Holy Spirit people. So, um, you know, when people, when you get a word of knowledge, it's always got to be uh, follow the scriptural pattern. It's always got to follow uh, the pattern of scripture. You know, and we, we need to be aware that we don't get deceived by the, holy, by, um, by the enemy. When we start being used by God, we think, oh, you know, that we can do it. We can do it. We can do it. We can do it whenever we want to do it. You know, it's not. It's when the Holy Spirit wills and we just need to uh, quieten our lives down. When we're so busy, uh, we can just grab anything there that's there and, and we've got to be careful what we're grabbing a hold of. <laughs> we could be grabbing hold of something that the enemy wants to bring uh, and not what the Holy Spirit. We need to quieten our lives down and allow him um, to, uh, to speak to us. So the Holy Spirit will always operate in, in, in line with the word of God. He will always exalt Jesus as Lord, Savior, Healer, uh, Deliverer and Coming Gifts. And, uh, and, and like I said, these gifts will operate as, as he will. So when the entire body of believers are covered the gifts of the Spirit, then the Holy Spirit is able to divide to each person as he will. And, and that's, you know, I realize that, you know, when, when we all have a heart uh, to open ourselves up to God and allow God to use us and to speak it to us, then the Holy Spirit can give to you as he wills. We've got to make ourselves, position ourselves uh, uh, to be available for the Holy Ghost to use us. And, and when, when the Holy Ghost sees that, he will bring a word and release a gift of the Holy Spirit through you to touch somebody else's life. Uh, so pray, pray, pray that God, you know, I want to be used. You know, put yourself out there. Covet, earnestly desire the gifts. And uh, when you do that, the Holy Spirit will see that and he will begin to use uh, you in, the, in those operations and manifestations um, of the gifts of the Spirit. So let's have a, just have a quick look uh, over what, what I touched on last week. The word of knowledge is a, is a supernatural revelation. It's a supernatural, we are supernatural being. God is supernatural, we are supernatural. Supernatural revelation by the Holy Spirit of certain facts in the mind of God. Of certain facts in the mind of God, God is omniscient. He's all knowing. He knows everything, he, and uh, and he he wants to reveal uh, just a fragment of his information, his knowledge uh, to us, and he wants to impart that to uh, to speak into somebody else's life. Uh, so, uh, just a part, a fragment of what he knows about that person. It's a, a word, and it's only a fragment or a sentence of the knowledge that he has. And he wants to impart that uh, to you. Um, uh, uh, and, and when we operating in the counsel of God and we speak into people's lives, uh, he, God wants to give you just something about uh, the facts uh, about that person's life, about something in the past 
or in the present. Uh, the gift of the word of wisdom is to do with the future, but the gift of the word of knowledge is some facts about the past and the present, right now where you are, uh, that God wants to reveal about that person's past or present, and he wants to, uh, to use you and to speak into that person's life something of the revelation of the, of the word of God, the knowledge of God and the love of God. He wants to release his love into someone's life. And, and you might just be the person that God wants to use. So we've got to position ourselves uh, uh, to do that. And, um, and, and, and that would be just what God wants to do at that time, at that particular time, uh, at that particular given time. That's when God wants to use you. And, um, you know, we, we, uh, we need to be aware of that and open ourselves up for that. So that's what the word of knowledge uh, is all about. It's a, a supernatural revelation of certain facts of the mind of God to do with that person that's right in front of you, something about their facts, about their past, or about their present. So the word of knowledge um, can be used in many different ways. Uh, it's not just restricted, restricted to a, um, a, 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 in a church service, but it can be restricted, uh, can be used in a, a situation outside, and you know we live more outside the church than what we do inside the church, of course. So in, in work, in family situations, in, um, in, uh, when we are meeting with friends and family and family meetings, um, groupings, uh, you know, God wants to use you and, uh, and God wants to use you through all those different ways. It can manifest through a vision or a, a dream uh, or a message from an angel, uh, a gift of prophecy uh, and, and all of those things. And be used in a private, and even in your own private uh, time. And God can just bring a, a word uh, you know, um, when, you, when, you, when you've lost something, when you lose your keys, you lost your mobile phone, uh, you just got to wait on God and God will give you a word and you know exactly where it is and you go there or sometimes, you, uh, you know, when you walk into a room, you forget what you walked in there and you just got to wait on God and there it is and, and God will give it to you. See, God wants to speak to us more times than we can ever think or imagine um, or ask and uh, just got to believe God and God's there willing. He's our, he's our helper. The Holy Spirit's our helper. Uh, he's our counselor. He's our comforter. He's our teacher, our guard uh, and, uh, and director. Uh, and, and he does all of those things. That's what the Holy Ghost does. And, and he wants to speak into your life. Um, so um, that's, that's exciting. So um, uh, let's have a look. And, you know, and I was thinking also, uh, you know, when you're, when you're driving along when you, and the Holy Spirit wants to guide you and he will just, just speak a word into your life. You know, don't go that way. Don't go, go this way. And, and you don't know why you went that way, but, you know, you found out there was an accident down that way. And, you know, and lots of other different ways that God will, will speak and guide and direct you. The Holy Ghost will, uh, he's always there to comfort us and direct us. And, um, and, and, and it's exciting when, when we see that happening in our lives and it's just a word that God wants to drop into your heart and, and, uh, and you've got to be ob obedient to that and uh, it's, that's exciting. So let's have a look at some of the, uh, just have a look at five um, examples of the word of knowledge um, in the Old Testament. And now, you know, the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit were in operation in the Old Testament. The only ones that weren't, of course, is were... Uh, is the speaking of tongues and the interpretation of tongues. They were not in the Old Testament, but the other seven were in the, in the Old Testament. So let's have a look at five examples um, of that, just to give you an idea of different uh, life situations where, where the Holy Ghost can come into your life and to bring a word into a situation that's right in front of you. And, uh, you know, when we see the, read these examples in the Old Testament and, and also in the New Testament, it just inspires me that if God can use people in that situation, then God can use me in, in present day situation. You know, and, and, and God used the gifts in the Old Testament and he used them in the life of Jesus and he used them in the, uh, in, in the early church and the disciples and the apostles. Um, and so he wants to use in, uh, in us present day right now he wants to use the gifts of the holy spirit uh, through you and he wants to manifest them through you into a, a present situation that's right in front of you whether that's in a prayer line in the church but it, more so it's in the present day life situation where you are right now in your home and your work 
driving and fellowshipping with people. It's just a word that you can bring into people's lives that can minister the love and the grace and the mercy of God into them. And it's exciting when that happens and they just get blown away by that and they just makes God real to them and they just realize they have a need. They, there's something in their hearts that just triggered something off that they need Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And it's powerful when the Spirit of God comes in. Something supernatural and, and, and something supernatural is happening in their, life, uh, in their lives as well at the same time. And they just surrender their hearts to Him and, and ask Him to come into their life to be their Lord and Saviour. And God wants to use you uh, to manifest those gifts through you for that to happen. So let's have a look at the Old Testament. The Word of, um, the word of Knowledge in the Old Testament. In the recovery of uh, Saul's donkey in 1 Samuel uh, chapter 6, uh, Saul uh, had his, uh, lost his father's donkeys and uh, so they, um, they sought the man of God. And, uh, you know, I started thinking about this, you know, they're looking for the man of God all the time in the, in the Old Testament, that is. Um, you know, they look for the priest, they look for the prophet, you know, to find, they tell them, you know, what, what they're to do and what they can't do. You know, that's not the case in the New Testament. The New Covenant, the Holy Spirit comes inside of us. You are the man of God. You are the woman of God. You are full of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost comes inside of you and he lives inside of you. So you are the man of God. You are the woman of God now. God wants to speak to you. God wants to reveal things through you. You see here when people were looking for the man of God, so to, for God to reveal it through them. But now in, God wants to reveal it uh, th through you. So... Um, in 1 Samuel chapter 9, and he said to him, Look now, there is in, in this city a man of God, and he is an honourable man. All that he says surely comes to pass. And uh, we need to be aware of that, all that we say, uh, whether it comes to pass, uh, if it comes. So let us go to there. Perhaps he can show us the way that we should go. So they had to go to him to show the way. But, you know, God wants to come to you and to show you the way. So when Samuel, Samuel was the priest at the time. So when Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said to him, There he is, the man whom I spoke to you. This one shall reign over my people. Uh, but as for the donkeys that were lost there, uh, lost three days ago, do not be anxious about them, for they have been found. And uh, so, um, you know, so, so Samuel gave them a word and they were looking for the donkeys. And uh, where are those donkeys? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, but but God, God spoke through the man of God through Samuel the priest, and told them they had been found, and, and they actually found themselves home, and they got home themselves. But it was a word of knowledge, you know, to stop looking where that where they were looking, and to go home, not to be anxious uh, that they have all been found. The second one is the revealing the location of Saul. Samuel had an, uh, Samuel the prophet had anointed Saul to be king over Israel. But when it came, I don't, this is extra, there's some funny stories in the Old Testament, I'll tell you. So, but when it came for, uh, for them to anoint uh, Saul to be king, they couldn't find him. How could you lose a king? But they lost a king. So the people inquired of the Lord the location of Saul. And God had given them the, the exact location. And this story is also in 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 21 and 22. And... Um, and when he had caused the tribe of uh, Benjamin to come near by their families, the family of Matri was chosen. Saul, the son of Kish, was chosen. But when they sought him, they could not, uh, he could not be found. Uh, therefore they inquired of the Lord further, Has the man of God come here yet? And the Lord answered, There he is hidden among the equipment. I don't know why the king was hidden among the equipment, but that's the story. And uh, you've got to believe the word of God. So, um, you know, God wants to reveal um, certain facts. So the word of knowledge reveals certain facts of the mind of God. And, uh, you know, but, you know, it's exciting. We see God knows where you are. Uh, you know, they may have lost the king in the in the Old Testament, but, uh, you know, God had never, he, God never uh, always knew where he was. You know, they just didn't know him where he was. So they went to the man of God and God told him because he knows he's omniscient, knows everything. Uh, omniscient. Yeah, God knows everything. He wants to reveal just a fragment of that information uh, to you. And um, and so um, so God knows where you are, you know, and, and he's uh, preparing you. Um, something that Telly mentioned there a couple of weeks ago that God preparation comes before promotion 
and um, you know, and God knows where you are, and He's has you in the location. He knows exactly where you are, and He's preparing you, preparing you to promote you. He wants to use you in the, in these gifts of the Holy Spirit. So He's preparing you, and He's got you, know, and He knows where you are. He's the Holy Ghost is working on you, on you, building up your faith, and and uh, and, and get ready, get ready. God's going to start using you. God wants to use you, and uh, if you have a, a desire in your heart to be used of God. Uh, then, then God will start using you. Step out in faith. Step out in faith. When God gives you a word, uh, you know, step out in faith. And it's exciting when that starts to happen. Word of knowledge uh, was used to encourage Elijah. You know, the enemy just wants to rob and to kill and destroy. But Jesus came to give us life and life more abundantly. You know, God started using Elijah in amazing ways and, and uh, used Elijah uh, to destroy the, the prophets of Baal um and uh you know it's exciting when that happened but then uh, i don't know why but uh elijah was used uh, mightily of god to destroy the prophets of baal but elijah became fearful when he received a message um from uh, jezebel that he was going to kill him uh he thought he was the only one left and and he got uh, and he got this message that jezebel was after him and he just took off you know we just need to be aware of what the enemy's speaking uh, and now he wants to speak to, to you just as much as the, as, as the Holy Ghost wants to speak. But we need to be aware, listening ourselves, tuning ourselves to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and we always know that the enemy wants to rob and to kill and destroy. He's the father of lies. He will always tell you, tells you lies. You know, um, he told Elijah that he was the only one. There's no one else left. But, you know, but God brought a word uh, uh, in a vision, through a vision, a word of, the, of, of God into his heart and said um, uh, that, that you're not the only one, that there's 7,000 that haven't uh, bowed their knees uh, to Baal. And uh, while hiding in a cave, the Lord spoke a word of knowledge. Uh, and he's not the only one. There are 7,000. Um, you know, you know, you're more certain... You are more certain to hear from God if you cultivate a relationship with Him, rather than to wait, um, rather than to wait to receive a word from another believer. That's right. So we need to spend time. We need to make time. We need to increase our our um, our vocabulary, our our, our 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 communion, I should say, and our relationship with God, and just believe God, and because God wants to use you. You know, it's exciting when God wants to, and we need to be aware of that and to. God will cultivate, if as we cultivate a relationship with him, we can begin to hear from him and God wants to speak to you. And, um, you know, and rather, and God wants to speak to you rather than through somebody else. And we need to cultivate that relationship and increase our uh, communion with him, increase our relationship with him so he can speak into your life. It's more exciting when God speaks to you direct than what, he, what it is when God speaks through someone else. And, uh, and sometimes we, when we just shut ourselves off from God, God will have to speak or God will speak through someone else. Um, but, you know, it's more exciting when God uh, speaks to us, when we cultivate uh, and increase that communion with him and that relationship with him, God will speak to you. Uh, and that's, that's exciting. Um, the fourth one, the exposure of, the, uh, of uh, Gehazi. When Nahum, uh, when Nahum was uh, healed of leprosy and wanted to give an offering to the prophet Elisha, Elisha refused, but his servant um, Gah Gehazi ran after the, uh, the prophet and wanted to receive the, um, the reward um, uh, for himself. Uh, but, you know, but God revealed through Elisha, uh, through the uh, supernatural revelation or, of a word of knowledge and exposed Gehazi as being a, a, a thief and a hypocrite. And you know, that's found in um, in Second Kings um, chapter 5. So it, it was a, a word of knowledge because it was something that, uh, that was from the past or the present. Um, the word of wisdom is to do with the future, but the word of knowledge is to do with uh, the past or the present or the present in situation right in front of you. And uh, God used Elisha for a word of knowledge to expose uh, the hypocrisy and the and the the the, uh, the thieving of the of uh, Gehazi of of that reward that offering that um, that Nahum uh, wanted to give uh, that Elisha had rejected, but he wanted to go out and get it for himself. And uh, and God so God spoke a word of knowledge uh, to Elisha uh, about uh, that situation. The other and the last one is uh, Elisha is reveals um, God reveals to Elisha 
the plans of the enemy. Uh, God gave Elisha a word of knowledge to the king of Israel to warn him, uh, for him to give a, a word of knowledge to the king of Israel to warn him of the plans of the enemy. And every time the enemy set up a plan to ambush Israel, Elisha would tell the king their plans. And Elisha could not, could not have known the plans of the enemy that the king of Aram was discussing in his bedchamber. But the plans were revealed to Elisha through a supernatural revelation, uh, through a word of knowledge, um, and uh, he was able to uh, give that word of knowledge to the king of Israel, and they were able to uh, get out of the road, out of the road, and to ambush uh, them instead of uh, they be they being ambushed by the king of Aram. So God wants to rescue us in any situation. He wants to rescue. He wants to untangle us from the things of this world. And, and God will give you a word of knowledge or give somebody else a word of knowledge to speak into your life, to untangle you from the uh, attachments of this world and uh, to break through uh, and get into what, what God, into that area where God wants you. Uh, and, you know, the enemy is always going to be around us, uh, coming against us uh, all the time. And, um, you know, until the Lord takes us home. But uh, we are more than conquerors through him. Uh, for us to have a testimony, we have to have tests. For us to be victors, we have to have a victory. And um, and so is uh, the victory over the things of the enemy that that he brings around us. So, but uh, but God wants to show us that. He wants to reveal us. God revealed this in the Old Testament. He wants to reveal it to us as well of what the enemy is planning. And, you know, we uh, people will come into our into our lives and, um, and God will just give you a word of knowledge. You know, just be careful of that person. Uh, and and uh, whether you want to... To join your heart with that person and be one, be, become in agreement with them. You've got to be. God will reveal. The Holy Spirit will reveal uh, who you should uh, come into agreement with and who you should spend your time with, who you sh should receive from, and uh, and that's the gift of the Holy Spirit. He, it's the gifts of the Holy Spirit are around us more often than what we think or imagine, and uh, and we just need to be aware of that and just give time to that. Uh, quieten our lives down to receive um, uh, those gifts of the Holy Spirit that he wants to pour out um, upon our lives. So let's have a look at, um, um, at uh, the, in the word of knowledge in the New Testament. I do remember a story um, when, I, when I went to retire. I uh, retired 18 months ago now, nearly two years ago. And uh, I always had in mind to retire when I was 70. And uh, But I just, there, the, the year that I retired, it was about... About a third of the way through the year, I just, you know, felt God tell me to retire at the end of the year. That was um, two years before I was uh, planning on. And he said, just felt, you know, so I said to the boss, I'm going to retire at the end of the year. I didn't know until right towards the end, just before I retired, that the boss had told me that the products that we were, I was selling, I was a sales rep uh, with some medical products. And um, I, I didn't find out until the end of the year, you know, God knew all this. God knew all this was happening all the time. Uh, before me and uh, I didn't know until the, towards the end of the year that the two products that we were distributing that I was selling um, at the boss had lost distributorship of that product uh, at the end of the year he was going to lose distributorship so he would never would have never been able to afford me the following year but he didn't have to because I was going to retire because God had spoken to me to retire at the end of this year and uh, and that was so exciting when I realized that uh, that God had spoken in my life and, and God wants to guide and direct you and, and to use you and, and to speak into your heart, in your life, um, all these amazing things to, to, um, to get through life, to succeed in life. Uh, when you find Jesus, you find your purpose. When you find your purpose, you find success. And God wants to bring all of us success in the life uh, that we're living. And it's powerful when we start opening ourselves up and, and, and God, the Holy Spirit, wants to use uh, you and, and manifest uh, those gifts of the Spirit through, through you. So these uh, gifts of, of, the, of the Holy Spirit and the word of knowledge in particular in the New Testament, these gifts were evident in the ministry of Jesus in the Gospels and then after the day of Pentecost, uh, the gifts of the manifestation of the Holy Spirit through the, the apostles and the believers. And, um, you know, and I, God wants to use it in that, us today. I've said that before and I want to... Uh, you know, inspire you, encourage you to step out and believe God. God used the apostles and disciples in, in the Bible times, in the Acts of the Apostles, and he wants to use you uh, in the present day situation where you are right in front of you. 
uh, God wants to speak to you. The first one we're going to look at is the woman uh, at the well in John chapter 4. John chapter 4 records how Jesus operated the word of knowledge to convince a woman, uh, um, the woman at the well, of her need for Jesus. You know, Jesus started talking to her about the water, about the water that she's drinking, and that uh, that I will give you the water that I give you will well up into uh, wells of salvation, uh, wells until uh, unto uh, everlasting life. And the Samaritan woman uh, wanted this water, uh, and she said, "Give me this water, uh, so that I don't have to come here and drink and um, to draw water and to drink." Uh, thinking about the water that was in the well, but. Jesus uh, operated in a word of knowledge and he said to her to go and get your husband and, and she said I have no husband and Jesus you, you said that you, in, in John 4 you're right about that you have um, you have had five husbands that's in the past and the one that you are living with right now is not your husband this is the present so you see that this is a word of knowledge it's some uh, fact of information about the past and also about the present um, and that uh, the, the man that you're living with now is not your husband so Jesus knew by an inward revelation, a word of knowledge to use this gift to bring this woman to salvation. And God wants to use that in your life, in your ministry as well, to bring people unto uh, salvation. And, uh, you know, Jesus trusted in the Holy Ghost. Um, he just trusted. He laid, he, before, he become, uh, before he was born, he laid everything aside didn't lay his deity aside, but all these other supernatural, he laid that aside because he wanted to come as a man and operate as a man so he can die if in, in our place. So he had to trust the Holy Ghost. He had to trust God. And how much more do we have to trust God? You know, he showed us the way, showed us how to operate, how to, how to succeed in life, how to overcome in life, to listen to the Holy Ghost, to reject all the lies and deception of the enemy, but just to trust him and to reach out to him. And, and uh, you know, he just heard that word, that, that, that word of knowledge that God was, was speaking into him. The Holy Ghost was speaking into him and he spoke that out. And, and, and through that, uh, this lady and her whole village came to the Lord, came to salvation. And God wants to use you in those situations uh, as well. The second one is the word of knowledge to Peter regarding Ananias and Sapphira. This is found in Acts chapter 5, records the revelation through a word of knowledge of uh, corruption um, in the early church and lying in the early church. Ananias and Sapphira, uh, Sapphira came back uh, to, um, with some uh, proceeds of a, of a sale of property after telling people uh, Peter uh, that they gave all the proceeds, they'd given all of it. Um, the entire transaction was revealed to Peter through a word of knowledge, uh, through a word of knowledge. And, um, you know, we, we, and he said to him, you know, why have you allowed Satan to deceive you? Why have you lied to the Holy Ghost? You know, this was a word of knowledge. You know, he didn't, Peter wouldn't have known anything about that. But, but God spoke to him, the Holy Spirit spoke to him uh, in this situation. You know, why have you, this, this, uh, this is not the full amount. You've kept some of it back. You know, why did you deceive yourself? Why did you allow, why did you allow the enemy to deceive you? And we need to be aware of that. We need to be, guard our hearts. Uh, God says, guard your heart. You guard, you humble yourself. You guard your heart. And, uh, and, and the way to do that is to allow, open yourself up for the Holy Ghost. He will lead you and direct you and teach you, comfort and, and direct you um, and, and counsel you. Count, that's what the Holy Ghost, he counsels and leads and directs you. And we need to be aware of that. Don't give yourself to the lies of the enemy. And, uh, you know, when the closer we get come to the Lord, the more obvious it is to the, it is uh, the deception of the end. The more we read the word, the more obvious it is uh, the, the deception. And, um, you know, we need to be aware of that. Uh, you know, Peter said, why did you? Why did you allow yourself to be deceived? Why did you lie to the Holy Ghost? And that was through a word of knowledge, a revelation of the, of the word of knowledge. So it's just amazing the different experiences that God, uh, that the Holy Ghost can bring into your life. Just a couple of, uh, before we finish up, uh, just a couple of um, examples that, um, of, of the word of knowledge that um, was operating through Brother Hagen um, uh, in his ministry. Um, uh, you know, the, the first one, he received a vision of a, of a young woman who did something wrong uh, to be accepted. You know, we do a lot of silly things to be accepted by this world, don't we? To be accepted by people and friends. You know, we, we don't have to do anything to be accepted by God. He accepts us the way we are. 
Uh, he welcomes us the way we are. You know, we surrender ourselves to him. We don't have to, I said, listen, hang on, God, I'll go, go back and uh, clean up myself a bit and then I'll, I'll come back. You know, God accepts you the way you are. And then he begins to refine you and, and to, uh, bring you into perfection and, and things like that. Uh, but, um, you know, this woman, uh, young lady, uh, in, a, in a prayer line situation, uh, God had spoken into his heart, you know, that she'd done something wrong and uh, to be accepted. And so God gave uh, Brother Hagen a word of knowledge. And uh, when she realized that she'd failed God, she wanted just to run away from God. And uh, she didn't want to come back to church anymore. But, you know, Br Brother Hagen gave a, a word of knowledge to her and, uh, and the lady responded and she was gloriously re restored. So, you know, in, when you're ministering to people, just uh, quieten yourself down uh, and just listen to God. You know, God, you know, and we, even in uh, when praying, uh, you know, the best prayers are prophetic prayers. When you're praying into somebody's life, you know, that, that God wants to reveal something. You know, God has something as a purpose and a plan for your life, you know, and we're just praying, you know, God's created you, created you for significance. We're praying prophetically into someone's life in a, in a prayer line or in a private uh, a prayer situation, um, uh, uh, you know, counseling situation. We just need to open ourselves up and allow God to speak into our hearts and lives, speak into that person's life, to bring some uh, restitution and uh, restoration uh, in, in people's lives and, and bring love and grace and mercy and favor into people's lives. And uh, God wants to do that through a word of knowledge. And uh, another situation, the Lord showed Brother Hagen that a young man in his church had lost his temper at work and, and did something wrong. And, and because of all this that's happening around his life, he fell sick and was, was actually in hospital. And uh, God told him to go and to pray for this man and to bring a, a word of knowledge about the whole situation. And, uh, and, the, and the young man was restored. And, uh, the, you know, that's exciting when God does that. Um, and speaking to people's lives is powerful. And another situation, you know, the Lord uh, spoke to Brother Hagen about a man in his church. Uh, he was in a, a church service, and God showed him a man down the down the back of the, and he spoke it out. And uh, and and we got to be courageous and and be full of faith, full of the Holy Ghost. When we when God gives you a word in in a public assembly, we got to speak that out. And uh, and if it's um, we always got to be careful that we do it in love and grace. Uh, but but if it has to be spoken out, then it has to be spoken out. And uh, this guy had come to church. He wasn't saved, uh, but he spoke some harsh things towards his wife. And uh, and 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 God gave Brother Hagen a, a word of knowledge about this whole situation. And he spoke that out. And he came and uh, spoke, told what this guy had said. And um, and and when he realised that God was real, that God that God knew what had happened, that, and it just spoke to him that God was real. And, uh, and he ran forward and gave his heart to the Lord. So God wants to use you in all different situations. He used you to bring people into the kingdom. Uh, and this man rushed forward and gave his heart to the Lord in, in because of that supernatural revelation of the word of knowledge that, that the Holy Spirit gave to Brother Hagen. In another situation, Brother Hagen's uh, niece came to live with them through a, a divorce situation. And... Uh, and he gave boundaries to her, you know, that uh, she was allowed to do this and this, and she wanted to go and uh, go with um, uh, to her school friends, and they were practicing a, a school play or something. And um, and he gave her boundaries, and and she said uh, he said to her that you must be home by a certain time, and and she wasn't, and um, you know, but when the brother Hagen she still hadn't got home, and brother Hagen was lying in bed, and God uh, gave him a a, a, a vision. Of where she was and uh, when she came home uh, he asked where that where she was and of course she didn't tell the truth but uh, brother Hagen gave exactly the uh, the whole description of the room where she was and the and the furniture and, and where she what was in the in the in the room and um, and <laughs> you know it's through that that God realized that, uh, that she realized that God was real and uh, she just sur surrendered her heart uh, to to the Lord uh, because of that whole incident, and she uh, never looked back since. So uh, it's powerful when God uh, uses you in a word of knowledge to bring some uh, uh, bring restoration into someone's life. So we can see there that uh, and the, another thing, the word of God, uh, the word of knowledge can be used for is uh, in um, is to act as an aid of prayer to activate prayer in, in a situation. 
and the greatest areas where the word of knowledge can be used as an aid to effectual prayer, either for God's servants in distress or for those in spiritual need. Um, so it's powerful when in any situation where we are that God will speak into you, um, you know, on how to get out of the situation where you are. Um, this uh, lady, a pastor's wife, uh, suddenly had a, a burden to pray for her adopted son. And uh, she uh, prayed for him fervently and she and God gave her a, a word of a, a vision of, of a situation that that he was in. And she was praying and praying and praying. And, and God might give you a word, a, a word of knowledge, a, a vision uh, about a, a situ a present present day situation, a present day situation like a word of knowledge is about the past and about the present. So God might want to give you a vision about something uh, to pray for. And this lady's um, uh, gave her, God gave her a vision of her son being in distress, and she saw him going into a pool, a pool room, and, and uh, you know that's like a bar, um, and um, and she, and she saw him turn around and go back out again, uh, and it was just through powerful prayer and effectual prayer into that situation, and uh, when he came home that night, he said to his mother that that he had a great victory today. And, and that victory came because of a vision that, that, uh, that the Holy Spirit gave to that lady, gave to the mother, and she prayed into that situation. It was a word of knowledge about a present situation that was right in front of her, that was happening right there and then. And because of that, that word of knowledge and that faith and stepping out and effectual praying and believing God, the whole situation, God was able to intervene in that situation and the guy turned around and came out of that bar and had a great victory and he lived a great and victorious life. And God wants to do that in our lives um, and he wants to use you. You know, pastors and, and parents, we, we need that, don't we? We need the word of knowledge. We need a word of wisdom to how to operate a church, how to bring up a church, how to run a church and how to bring up and raise children. We need that word of knowledge, that word of wisdom all the time and uh, it's exciting when God will give you that and there's a breakthrough um, in, in those situations uh, around about your life. We need the Holy Spirit's guidance um, and, uh, and, and we need that operation and manifestation of the gifts of the Holy Spirit um, in these troubled times. So that's about the result. All there is uh, today. It's exciting when uh, when God starts using you, and, and uh, God started to use me in these different areas. And it's um, powerful when God um, speaks into your heart. But we need to make time. We need to quieten ourselves down, listen to the Holy Ghost, and step out in faith uh, and allow God to use you. Remember, uh, the revelation of the Word of Knowledge uh, is never in the future, but it's always in the present or sometimes in the past. Uh, situation it's the word of wisdom is for the future uh, but the word of knowledge is for the past and for the present so through the operation of the word of uh, knowledge the church is is purified the distressed are comforted the saints are gladdened lost property property recovered the enemy's plans are defeated and the lord jesus is glorified so I hope you got something out of that today. Uh, you know, the, we, it, God wants to use you in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And um, like I said, we need to quieten ourselves down, open ourselves up, listen to the Holy Ghost. We need to increase our, our time with Him, increase our communion with Him, increase our relation, our time with Him so we can tune ourselves to the voice of the Holy Spirit because He wants to speak into you and to use you to speak through you into someone's life to bring someone into the kingdom, to bring someone uh, into salvation. And, uh, and for you, and, and even a word of knowledge to cause you to break through uh, in, in where you are and to, to live a successful, uh, powerful, overcoming, successful Christian life. And, and the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom and the gifts of the Holy Spirit will do that as you allow and open yourself up and allow God to use you. Hope you got something out of that today. If you have any questions, any queries, uh, put them in the uh, comments box uh, down below and, uh, and I'll get back to you. We have some uh, other exciting speakers uh, at 8 o'clock um, uh, for the rest of the week. Uh, Rob and Tracy tomorrow. Uh, the girls on, um, on Wednesday. Evangelism on Thursday. And um, Keith and Cheryl on the, um, uh, the, uh, the Authority of the Believer on Friday. And then also at night, uh, most nights during the week, 7.30, uh, listen to some other amazing speakers about what God's doing, 
we're all in the school of the spirit we're all in the school of the spirit and uh, it's exciting when you and we need to put ourselves in a position position yourself to receive um, uh, all of the this uh, gifts of the Holy Spirit and the words of wisdom from God for us to uh, to push through in life uh, thanks for watching this morning I hope you got something out of that uh, catches uh, bless you in Jesus name